TMZ TV. What happened to Santa Claus? What happened to the Easter Bunny? What happened to the Tooth Fairy? What happened to Underdog? What happened to the Partridge Family? What happened to the Brady Bunch? What happened to Scooby-Doo? I don't know. I'm talking about the loss of innocence. The loss of innocence. What happened? What happened to the magic of childhood? Oh, don't worry. This is just water here on my shirt. I didn't have time to wait for it to dry. It, it'll be evaporated. I just didn't have time. I rinsed my hair and I didn't have time. But watch it evaporate. If you do nothing else, watch the water evaporate on my shirt. Things used to be magical when you were a kid. Okay, let me speak for myself because I know some of you have had, maybe many of you had lousy childhoods. And I, I feel terrible about that. I mean, that's the worst thing. I can imagine your parents, get, they make you or break you, you know, and my parents made me. And so I, I thank God for that. My home was a respite. It was a, an oasis from the madness of that thing I called school. Couldn't wait to see those school buses pull up at the end of the day. Happiest sight. Uh, I still remember it. I still remember seeing that clock and seeing those school buses, hearing them pull up. And I'm like, thank God. Couldn't wait to get out of there. But what happened to those days? Uh, well, you get clobbered through life. Uh, in a way, I had a disadvantage growing up naive and innocent and happy. I thought every, everybody was the Brady Bunch. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, Marsha got hit in the nose with a football that one time. So that, that, there were some tragedies on the Brady Bunch. That's true. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. But generally, I got broadsided by the world. I will tell you this. Sometimes on the show, I know people see me having a drink, having a smoke. I talk about, you know, pornography, what, whatnot. But I, I want you to know something. Is that, well, let's just talk about the drinking and smoking for now. This will be instructive. I'm not just here to talk about myself. But I didn't drink anything until I was 50 years old. I was, like, against all those things. Never let a smoking article touch my lips until I was 50 years old. In fact, I would just, I would hate on people who smoke. I said, what's the matter with these idiots? Only an idiot would start smoking. Because I was an athlete. I was always running. I was always working out. I still am. And I find that cigarettes don't mess that up at it. At all, but anyway, you see, I was pure and holy. What some people would call pure and holy, I was innocent. I didn't do any of that stuff. What happened? Well, <laughs> everybody, sometime in their life, gets broken. I'm gonna call this show the Eon of Our Discontent, named after the famous John Steinbeck novel. The winner of our discontent. I remember reading that. It was after high school. I read a lot of books on my own. I mean, I loved reading. I liked reading classic literature. The winner of our discontent. It was Steinbeck's last novel. Wrote it in 1961. It was about a guy who goes through life trying to do everything right. Kind of like the movie Dick and Jane with Jim Carrey and Tia Leone. There it is. You try to do everything right. I, I, great line in that movie, Jim Carrey. He comes in the living room with a gun he tells his wife that he's that they're going to become bank robbers they're just going to become criminals he said we tried to play by the rules and we got screwed what are you doing with billy's squirt gun we followed the rules and we got screwed we were good people honest people and we got screwed <laughs> that's a great line we tried to play by the rules and we got screwed what a great movie line that is and it's a story of our lives um, it doesn't mean, sometimes it means, it doesn't mean we completely lose it, but it means several things. See, it's drying up already down here. Uh, one of the things it means is that we relax more. Do you notice how older people, when they get into nursing homes, they become cantankerous. They become cranky. They start saying words that they never said before. And it's because they're at the end of their lives and it's like, 
I try to do everything right and I'm here drooling on myself, getting fed cottage cheese and applesauce by people who are just putting in their time and can't wait to get the hell away from me. Well, F that S son of a, you know, these people go nuts. I figure, <laughs> why, not, why not get a head start on that? They seem to be more relaxed. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're more agitated. I'm not going to give any advice. I'm just going to give you an account of things. So what broke you? You can write it down here in, in the comments. What happened that destroyed the magic of childhood? Maybe your childhood destroyed the magic of childhood. Maybe you don't even know what the magic of childhood is, in which case I, I feel terrible for you, you know. If I were God, that would never happen to you. So some people got jaded and ruined early. I got jaded and ruined later in life. And after my wife wrecked our family, Back in 2009, that was my event, really. And I said exactly what Jim Carrey said. I tried to play by the rules, and I got screwed. I really tried to do everything right in my life. And in a way, I was maybe a little bit self-righteous, especially with the smoking and the drinking, because I looked down on people who did those things. Folks, I was never a victim of peer pressure in school. Never. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel an ounce of it. While the football players were screwing the cheerleaders, my friends and I were playing Pac-Man at the bowling alley. I mean, we were so nerdy. My friends were so nerdy. And they still are. I'm probably the less nerdy, the least nerdy guy of all the friends I went to high school with. I'm the coolest, man. The coolest. But... When, and when that happened, it's like, okay, so what's the craziest thing I can do? And I thought the craziest thing I can do, well, it happened at Clyde Pilkington's house. I was living there after another disastrous experience in 2013. And um, Clyde Jr. had these little Italian cigars. They were called Avanti. I still have some here, Avanti. And... To me, it was the most awful thing in the world to do. Th this was like, he says, hey, Sander. He's like the devil. He's like the devil on my left shoulder. Hey, Sander, why don't you smoke one of these Avantis? A smoking article literally never touched my lips. I was appalled by the whole thing. So that's, I, I said to myself, you know, I played by the rules. I tried to do everything right, and I got screwed. Give me that cigar. I let it, I didn't know how to do it. I said, what do I do? Do I, do I? Inhale? No, no, don't inhale. So I looked really awkward. Probably still do. I don't know. I think I do a little better. But that's, that's when I thought, you know what? Oh, you know what else I used to do? I used to detest people who went to Florida during the winter. What a bunch of sissies. What a bunch of wimps. What a bunch of wussies. Then I went to Florida one time during the winter. Hmm. Maybe these people aren't so stupid after all. And these people who drank alcohol, what a bunch of weaklings. What a bunch of weaklings that need crutch to get through life. What's the matter with these people? Then, in conjunction with the consumption of the Avanti cigar, the Avanti Italian cigar, I started uh, trying a little vino. And then I said, ah, oh, so this is what those people have been crowing about for all these years. Hmm. And at that time in my life, for the first time, I needed something. So it's just like, I freaking give up. But see, that's because I started life as such a Boy Scout. That's my version of giving up and letting it all hang out. Smoking a cigar and drinking a glass of wine. I was that pure. Now, on the sex side of things, um, I made love with one person. For 26 years. Until I was 50 years old, I had only had sex with one person, and that was my wife. I never had sex before my wife. I was a nerd. I was playing Pac Man. Was not into it. Was not pulled by it. I mean, I was aware of girls from a very, very early age. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, I was a kid in first grade who would, you know, chase the girls, give them a kiss, kind of like Georgie Porgy. How's that go? Georgie Porgy, pudding and pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. Oh, but that wasn't the case with me in first grade. Was I six, seven years old? No, it was Martin Zender, whiskey and rum, kissed the girls and made them, what was the last word? Kissed the girls and made them, oh yeah, it was hum. Kissed the girls and made them hum. Yeah, that was it. So, but I never felt the urge to conquer women. I'm a servant of women. So, Anyway, that, I just wanted to get that out of the way. So, anyway, during the eon of my discontent and your discontent, I th- I'm not so sure it's a case of we start sinning. Because, as I described before, smoking and drinking, looking at pornography is not sinning. What I think it is, I think it's that we just realized how the world really was. I didn't know it was an evil eon. I, but Galatians 1.4 has been in the scriptures for a long time. Paul talks about being extricated out of the current wicked eon. That verse has been in there a long time. It was in there while I was home watching Gilligan's Island, the Partridge Family, and the Brady Bunch. I didn't know it was a wicked eon. I thought it was an awesome eon. Then I found out it was a wicked eon by a series of betrayals. I found out how people really were. I found out that not everybody was raised like I was. Some people were, many, many people were abused, especially women. They weren't loved. They were abused. This was a shock to me because I was so innocent going into relationships. Oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah, well, I found out different. Then I read Galatians 1.4 when I started reading the scriptures on my own in 1979. I got my first Bible, a New American Standard Bible. Current wicked eon. And as life goes on and as things happen, you realize that shit, man. There ain't no Santa Claus. There ain't no Tooth Fairy. There ain't no Easter Bunny. And the cavalry ain't coming. All we have is God. That's That's a hell of a transition. That is a hell of a transition to make. From thinking that the world is going to provide your happiness, provide your contentment, provide your fulfillment, and you find out that it dashes you. I never found that out until I was like 50 years old. I was a late bloomer, way late to the game, way late to the evil eon. So that transition, though, though it's perilous, is absolutely necessary. And I think the transition begins with a break, and you realize that life is not going to fulfill me. Then you go to God. This is what God uses, should I say. God uses the breaking to bring you to himself. I don't know if it comes any other way. I really don't. I don't know if it comes any other way except through severe disappointment in life, being betrayed, being hurt, being devastated, disappointed constantly, your job, and your marriage, your, your kids, whatever it is, your personal life constantly not being able to do things you want to do that's in the scripture too i didn't know that was in there romans 7 the things i want to do i don't do the things i don't want to do these things i do do that wasn't my life for 50 years i did the things i wanted to do and i didn't do the things i didn't want to do so then things got real man things got real for me i was devastated absolutely devastated i mean it didn't happen in one day it happened over a series of four years And that's in the era when I said, oh, alcohol. (laughs) Thank God for alcohol. There you go. There you go. God, then I realized the things that God provided in order to endure. Evil eon, what? Yeah, now I know. Now I know. So now, look at me. Look at me now. I don't condemn anybody for whatever they do to get through the night. I'm not into sin. I don't like sin. I try not to sin. I'm not aware that I sin. I mean, as far as the list of sins in the Bible, either by Paul or in the Ten Commandments, I don't do any of that. I don't do any of that shit. Not to my knowledge, but like Paul says, I don't judge myself. I don't let other people judge me. But but I'm not excused by this. Paul even said that. Paul said, I'm not aware of anything in myself, but that doesn't make me innocent. I leave it to God. God is is the one who's going to, 
deal with me. So I throw myself completely into the arms of God. And that's where we all are now. Everyone listening to me, we're there. And I know you have these happy, happy Christians. I was once one of them. I once told my I was a Christian for three years from like 1979 to 82. Yeah. I told my brother-in-law. He might have been my future brother-in-law at the time. I told him, I mean, he was going through something. He was depressed. And I said, Christians have no reason to be depressed. <laughs> That's how innocent I was. <laughs> Christians have no need to be depressed. What's the matter with you? Life is wonderful. Jesus is in your life. The Spirit of God is in your heart. Be happy. Huh? All right, now I know. Now I know that that's all crap. That had to be blown out of me, and it was. And I'm here to report to you today that I think the place where you land after this naivety gets blown up is a better place. It's a better place to struggle. It's a better place to realize that it's an evil eon. It's a more spiritual place because... Your contentment and your joy is not based on anything the world can give you. Folks, I put, it's Easter day, so I can say this very appropriately. I put all my eggs in the next basket. And I recommend this for you. All of my eggs are in the next basket, the next one, the one in the celestial realm. I got nothing here. I don't expect anything here. And this is a great thing when you stop expecting things. It, it, it's really sad in a way. It's horrible. It makes you want to cry. Because you have all these wonderful expectations as a kid. And for me, they were fulfilled. I expected to get a drum set when I was 10 years old at Christmas. And I did. I expected to get a meal every day. And I did. I expected to be loved by my parents. And I was. I expected the Partridge family to come on at 7.30 on Friday night. And it did. I expected the Brady, I expected the Brady Bunch to come on right after that. At 8 o'clock. And it did. It never disappointed me. I expected Ginger and Mary Ann to be there for me, and they were. Ginger was voluptuous. Mary Ann was cute. I knew this early on. Everything came as expected. Then you grow up, and you you have maybe the problem is we have bigger expectations. And then as they are dashed one by one, then you realize I got nothing here. Nothing's going to do it, man. Not, nothing. And you stop expecting it. That's almost sadly, terribly a better place to be in. Because as a friend of mine said, I've learned not to expect anything and I've never been disappointed. Yeah. Isn't that tragic? I don't expect anything. Thus, I'm never di disappointed. I've come to that place. Maybe it's a place where you're just protecting yourself from trauma. You're protecting yourself from emotional things. You just... I used to make all kinds of plans, my marriage, this, oh, it's just my books and everything. I was going to publish this, publish that. I was going to be a famous author, blah, blah, blah. Eh. So you, you finally realize as these 10 soldiers start to fall, one soldier at a time, I ain't got no army. My army's decimated. In this life, I'm through. What a great line from Jesus Christ, Superstar. After he's beaten within an inch of a life, Jesus says to Pilate, after he asks him, where's your kingdom? He says, I have no kingdom in this life. I'm through. There may be a kingdom for me somewhere if you only knew. Well, that was a line from a play in a movie, but there is a kingdom for Christ, and he knew it wasn't here. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. I think that's how we could walk through the, the cross, walk through that, because I was going to say he didn't expect anything, but he did because he was disappointed. He expected his disciples to get it when he said stuff. I think he did, and they didn't, and so that disappointed him greatly. And I think the reason he rejoiced when he found faith anywhere in that God-forsaken land, he, he was thrilled. It, it, it comes out not seen such faith in all of Israel. And he found it from people you wouldn't expect it from, a Roman centurion, a Samaritan. Samaritan woman at the well, yeah. So, there ain't no Easter Bunny. So, we're living 
not only in the wicked eon, but we're living at the end of it. Where Paul says in the last days, perilous periods will be present. I'll let, read that whole horrifying list. Well, we're in up to our necks. Some of us up to our eyebrows. But we have a rescuer, and it is Christ. Jesus Christ is our rescuer out of the coming into nation. I tell people how bad this life is, and some people actually still tell me, this is just like any other age, just like any other age that that's ever been. I say to those people, you look at the events of the unveiling of Jesus Christ. Look what happens when God's wrath comes upon the earth. That should give you a clue of how bad it is because that's what it takes to erase it from the face of the earth, to erase the evil, the disappointments, the tragedies, the death, and to clear the table and make room for a new eon, for a new kingdom on this earth. But ladies and gentlemen, we currently are, spiritually speaking and proleptically speaking, we are in the kingdom of the kingdom in the heavens. We are in the celestial realm. God seats us among the celestials in Christ. We're not there literally. But Paul also says in another place, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, I think he says, the consummations of the eons have attained to us. That is, everything God is eventually going to work out in the end to bring everything to a satisfying conclusion, he considers us to be there in spirit. Paul does. Paul said it. Jesus Christ dictated it. The consummation of the eons have attained to us. Not the consummation of this wicked eon, but the eons of the eons. The fourth eon, the fifth eon, the kingdom eon, the new heavens and the new earth. They've attained to us. But it's, you're not going to find it watching television. You're not going to find it drinking or smoking a cigarette or looking at porn or anything else. I'm not pretending that you are, that I am. I've just been talking to you about things God gave graciously for us to enjoy to help us get through. But it's, it's all going away. And I thank God for it. I'm not hanging on to anything here. All going away. Good. Good. Can't wait. Wish it would go away today. Wish it would go away in two and a half minutes. It is going to gonna go away but until that time our disposition has to be not here our dis disposition as paul says in colossians 3 be disposed to things above be disposed to things above not those on the earth for your life is hid with christ in god and when christ our life is manifest then you also shall be manifested with him in glory